Hello, and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. I am your host, Christy. I come to you from the Denver area of Colorado, where I live with my husband, Ron, our two daughters, Tatum and Delaney, our tuxedo kitty, Lilu, and our Padango puppy, Sophie. And it is Christmas Eve. <laughs> Yay! I, this, I, you know, when I was a kid, it seemed like Dece December took forever to get to Christmas. And as an adult, it seems like it goes like that. Um, and it seems to go even faster now that I uh, work full time. Uh, this is the second December that I have been a full time employee since my kids were born. And, um, and it just goes that much faster because you're spending so much time at work. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I wanted to record a quick podcast. It's going to be super fast because as I said, it's Christmas Eve and we have things to do, uh, people to see, places to go. Um, and, and so I've got to get it done quickly, but I did want to show you guys the things. There's already things that I have knit, FOs that I can't show you in real life because they have already been gifted. So, um, before we had any more <laughs> issues with that, I wanted to, um, to go ahead and podcast real quick. So this is going to be shorter, but uh, hopefully still as much fun. We'll see. So FOs. <clears throat> I can kind of do these in order. These have actually been sitting here um, forever. Well, not literally, uh, but for a very long time because I was, I think I'd already had the first sock finished last podcast and um and i finished the second sock just shortly after that um but my husband is very well trained and knows that you can't wear a knitted item until it has been podcast about and so um these have been just sitting for the past couple of weeks uh but i did finish ron's socks i love how these turned out. These are so much fun. This is exactly my color aesthetic. I just, all of these just make me so happy. Um, this is a Regia Perfect uh, color. I don't remember the colorway, um, but like with many podcasters, I have failed in uh, keeping up with my um, uh, show notes down below. I used to be so good about it and I just can't anymore. Um, it's, it is, uh, sometimes all I can do to get the thing recorded and edited, uh, and uploaded. So, uh, but all of my information is on my project pages on Ravelry. I keep pretty good notes, uh, about start dates and what yarn I use and what uh, needle size I use and that kind of thing. Simple things like this, I don't really write a whole lot of notes, but if I make some changes to the pattern or if I come up with the pattern myself, I try to put that in the notes section. Um, that was another thing that I was really good at um, before. I used to keep really good notes about everything that I um, was working on and what was happening while I was working on things, but um, there's just not enough time. And I have knit so much now that I don't have a lot to say sometimes. But anyway, uh, so I am Christy Dash Lael uh, on Ravelry and uh, Christy Lael without the dash on Instagram. Uh, that is down below the spelling for it. So if you are interested in the, like this colorway, for instance, then you can find it on Ravelry on my project pages. But like I said, this is a pair of socks that I knit for Ron. The yarn is Regia Perfect, uh, which is set to make two exactly matching socks. Um, you have uh, a, a series of yellow in between where each sock is supposed to begin uh, and end. And um, Ron wears a size 10 men's shoe, which is not huge, but there was still a good five plus grams left over of the blue when um, I finished his socks. So um, I think that this would work for most men's feet. Um, I did 64 stitches. So I guess if you added a bunch of stitches, um, you know, somebody who's doing like 72 or 80, 84 stitches, you might, um, run into some problems. Um, but, uh, 64 stitches is fine for Ron. And, um, and then even if you did run out of the main color, there is 
quite a lot of, of the yellow, you know, a good three grams at least of the yellow. So um, I use three grams or just under three grams to make a toe or a heel or a ribbed cuff um, of, of 12 rows. So um, I think that there's really plenty uh, to make matching pair of socks for anybody's feet. Um, maybe not if you're Shaquille O'Neal, but you know, I don't know anybody who's knitting him socks. So there you have it. Uh, so anyway, yes, these are done. I knit these top down, which is not the way I normally knit socks, but it's the way that this uh, sock brand is meant to be knit. Um, so you, the, the, the center pull starts with the cuff part of the yarn. Um, so I did, I basically did a one by one ribbed cuff until I changed color, until it changed colors. Um, and then I did the, um, the leg until the stripes were done. And actually you're supposed to start the heel right here, but Ron likes his legs a little bit taller. So I basically did, I think these were 13 rows, maybe 12 rows. I basically just did another row of, um, of the main color and then started the heel. I did a fish lips kiss heel and, um, then knit down until it was time to start the toe and the toe is just a regular wedge toe and uh, kitchenered that off and then they were done and so ron now has another pair of socks to wear which is good because he is enjoying wearing them and honestly you know you'd think that man's a man's socks um would would take longer and be more cumbersome to knit because they're bigger you know uh, and especially because Ron likes his cuffs or his legs to be longer, but I don't know if it's because I'm knitting them for him and I love him or if it's because uh, I know that he will appreciate them or what, but I really find that knitting a pair of socks for Ron is almost feels faster than knitting a pair of socks for me. Uh, that might be in part uh, due to the fact that I have so many socks and so I don't need a new pair of socks and when I knit him a pair he normally needs them um, maybe that's it I don't know but yeah so there is that um, I also finished a hat unfortunately I left Fred the head over there um, so I'm just gonna show it to you like this <laughs> uh, this is the beeswax pattern uh, and I don't remember the designer I'm not prepared uh, today. I'm really, really not prepared. But, you know, when am I ever, right? This is not the ends for the um, yarn. This is the ends for the pom-pom um, that I wasn't going to weave in because this hat is going to go to my daughter, uh, Tatum, who, which is surprising because she normally doesn't want any of my knitwear, but she did ask for this hat. But she's not sure whether or not she wants it with a pom-pom on it, so... I told her it's just tied on there. If she decides later on she doesn't want it, we can take it off easily. Uh, so yeah, this is the beeswax pattern. Um, I will put the designer, I think I'm now putting them up here instead of down here, um, but wherever, somewhere on the screen, <laughs> will be the designer. Uh, and I, this is the final Hippo for the Holidays hat that I knit for 2019. Um, and you might notice that it is completely different than all of the other Hippo for the Holidays hats that I knit this year. And that is because I was bored <laughs> with knitting the plain hat. And I just wanted something a little bit um, more interesting. Plus, I'd run out of mohair and I didn't want to buy another skein of mohair because it doesn't take a whole skein. And um, I'm not going to be knitting any more of these hats um, uh, any more of the, the hippo for the holidays hats because the year is over and I've done it. Um, I might knit more hats using the pattern that I use, but I will probably knit them out of the worsted so I won't have to add the mohair. And if I do add mohair, I'm going to probably get a more interesting color mohair. I, I, anyway, the point is I didn't want to buy another skein of the Rowan Kid Silk Haze at this juncture even though it's great yarn and I've really enjoyed working with it. Um, I didn't want to, so, and I didn't want to have to do the math still to change from the worsted pattern that I'd come up with in my head at the beginning of the year for the Hippo of the Holidays hats. Um, and this is a DK. I didn't want to have to deal with the math 
which is why I got the mohair in the first place to add to it to make the DK a worsted weight. Uh, so long story short, too late, I know, I went ahead and knit this pattern instead, and I love the way it turned out. Um, and it fits Tatum perfectly. She's got a small head, um, so it uh, it fits her nicely. I took out a stitch repeat, which was like a pattern repeat, uh, which was like 12, something, 12, 14, 16 stitches, I think. And I did that because when I was knitting, like the pattern called for a lot of stitches to cast on way more than um, than I would need for my head um, and this part of the ribbing is actually it fits perfectly but when you get into the cables of course it kind of cinches it up so it's a little bit tight it still fits me but um, it fits Tatum better and so I'm gonna go ahead and go give it to her. This was um, knit out of Hippo for Halloween 2019, um, and it's a beautiful colorway, and I kind of like the way it pooled, and I think it looks great, and it works so well with this pom-pom that I got from Michelle uh, in my um, advent um, calendar from her. It was one of the days that I got this month, and it, it was just, it works perfectly, so kind of Tatum will decide that she wants to keep it on there, but, you know, when I hand it over to her, it will be her hat and she can do whatever she wants with it. And if she decides she doesn't want the pom-pom on this hat, I can always use it for another hat for myself. So yeah, so that is finished, and that means that I have officially done the 12 um, hats for this year. Um, I do not have any of them to show you except for that one because they have all been gifted. Um, as you, if, if you may recall, uh, you if you've been watching the podcast uh, for this year, um, I have made a hat every month um, to go along with Lolo did its Hippo for the Holidays knit along. This is the third year that I have done it, um, and it was so great to finish three years. Um, I am officially done <laughs> with that that particular knit along. Um, I'm going to try to maybe see if there's another little knit along that I want to do next year. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I knit the 12 hats out of all these different Hippo for the Holidays and um, Yeti Goes to Colorways um, that Lolo did it dyed, and I did them all in DK or worsted weight yarn. I did my own double-brimmed, straight-up-my-brain pattern, which is on all of my project notes um, on Ravelry. And, uh, and I gifted uh, eight... Seven, seven of them to my my coworkers for Christmas. Um, I got a little mug um, with uh, some hot chocolate, a little, like a little specialty hot chocolate packet, and um, and then the hats, and that was their gift for Christmas. They all really liked them. Um, there was actually a little bit of a of a fight over the mo the, two, the two that had mohair in them, which was surprising. Um, and yeah, so I was able to do that, and that was great. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do for next year because um, I'm running out of hand knitted items to make for them. I made uh, fingerless gloves last year, and then the hats this year. Uh, and there's, I mean, I'm sure they would love like shawls or whatever, but my my department keeps growing, <laughs> so I can't keep uh, uh, knitting a bunch of things. So next year they may get non-knitted items, which is not a bad thing, honestly. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, I was able to give one of the hats to Delaney, the one that I showed you that I made in November. So she's got that one. And then one of the hats I kept for myself. Um, actually, technically two hats I kept for myself because the one in January... Um, which was like the first, the, 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 the genesis of the idea of making the hats for gifts. Um, that, that one was one that I had made for myself using um, two sock Lolo did it held together, held double. And um, that was Hippo for uh, baby orange and Hippo for baby yellow, I believe. Um, and then I did keep one with the mohair for myself as well because, doggone it, I made them and I bought all the yarn and I really liked the look of it with the mohair, so I kept one for myself. Um, but it's way downstairs and um, and you've already seen them, so I don't need to show them to you again. 
but I did make 12 and um, I finished that and it feels good to do that. Um, let's see, what else have I finished? Oh, I did finish um, two pairs of fingerless gloves in the past week. Uh, you might recall from the last podcast, Delaney had asked me to make coordinating fingerless gloves for herself and her two BFFs from school, uh, Susan and Anai. And um, uh, Susan's favorite color is red and Anai's favorite color is blue and Delaney's favorite color is purple. So I got some leftover hippo for the holidays that I had in, in the socks um, and made them, uh, made Anai's and Susan's gloves. Um, I didn't have uh, one that was just, that just had blue, but I had one that had blue and green. And so um, we mixed that together for a nice and here's a picture of Delaney wearing those and then um, for Susan's her favorite color is red as I said and I had hippo for baby red uh, in a full skein actually so I was able to use part of that for Susan's gloves and then um, much to Delaney's dismay I haven't even started hers but um, they will be knit out of this and this is hippo for baby purple which is left over from the socks that I made in 2018. Um, so she will get her matching fingerless gloves soon. And what's interesting is that we, we, um, the girls are really into Pusheen. Apparently that's the cool thing if you're 12. Um, and, uh, so there were Pusheen mugs. Uh, we found on Amazon, these really cute Pusheen mugs, um, well, they're, they're called cappuccinos. Um, and so it's cappuccino in a mug on the mug. Um, it's very meta. And, um, and, and so there was uh, a pink one, which worked for Susan and her red. And then there was a blue one for Anai. And then there's a green one, which we're going to get for Delaney. The, Delaney put the gloves in the mugs. And so they're going to have matching gloves and matching mugs. And they're just all the cuteness whatsoever. And then I have one final F.O. And that is Delaney's sweater. I just finished it like this morning. I, I cast off this morning. Um, I had the ribbing left to do on the second sleeve and got that done and then had her get out of bed. She was asleep. Uh, had her get out of bed so that I could take a picture of her wearing it and here they are and you have to excuse the pajama pants but she had just literally gotten out of bed to take the picture um but it is done and it fits her perfectly um i absolutely love the way it turned out and um i just think that it's it's exactly what i was hoping to to accomplish um which is always nice when it works out i knit it out of the flax pattern which is um by Tin Can Knits. It's, oh, this is flax light. I'm sorry. Uh, so it's knit out of fingering weight, the regular flax pattern, which is also a free pattern. Is knit out of worsted, I believe. Um, maybe DK. No, I think it's worsted. Anyway, um, but yes, yeah, flax by Tin Can Knits. I used, um, what, what, oh, here it is. I used Zen Gardens, um, uh, sorry, Zen Yarn Gardens. Zen Yarn Gardens in their Serenity 20 color, uh, not colorway, line, which is super soft. Um, it is 70% super fine, super wash merino, 20% cashmere, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon. And it is so, so pleasant to knit with. Um, I was working on this um, a lot while I was knitting Ron's socks and Regia, which is a great workhorse yarn is not soft <laughs> in any way. Um, and so going between these socks and this, it just made this feel so much softer. Um, it was such a pleasant knit and, uh, yeah, I just absolutely loved it. Um, this actually, this yarn was sent to me I'm the worst, um, reviewer cause it was sent to me for a review a year ago. Um, and I just, I started a, a shawl for it and I just wasn't feeling the shawl and it sat and sat and sat and, you know, work got ca chaotic and, and I just, I just failed at it and, uh, was trying to figure out what I could do because I really wanted to fulfill my, my, um, my commitment to, 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 you know, do the review and, um, and it just kind of came to me that maybe a, a uh, 
um, a faded sweater for Delaney would work out perfectly, and it and it honestly did. I mean, look at it. Um, so the idea was is that they sent you uh, they they paired together a semi solid or a tonal um, a variegated yarn and a speckled yarn, um, and they were all you know in this coordinating color family. Um, and this is the one that I picked and, um, it's gorgeous. This speckled yarn is just about as perfect as they come. And then, um, the green in this semi-solid just makes me super happy. And then, um, down here at the bottom, this is the variegated, um, and, and it pooled on the bottom of the body, but I absolutely love the way it pooled. Honestly. Um, I love these, these kind of pools. Uh, they make me very happy. Uh, and then uh, it did not, it just, it was a nice variegation in the, uh, in the sleeves. So it, it worked out perfectly. The fade, I think, is lovely. Let's see if I can hold it so you can see. There you go. You can see the whole thing. Um, just, yeah, I think it looks perfect. Um, you might notice that the sleeves are a little bit different than on the Flax Light. You're only supposed to do like an inch inch and a half of cuff. Um, I did quite a bit more than that. And the reason I did is because I wanted her to be able to roll them like this and they are uh, thumb cuffs. So you might be able to see in the picture that she is um, putting her thumbs through. She loves thumb cuffs. I made um, the flex ma regular pattern for Tatum um, like maybe two years ago, a year and a half ago, and Tatum never really got much wear out of it, but Delaney wears it every single day. Um, I, of course, had to wash all of the big sister cooties off of it before she would wear it, but now it is covered in Delaney cooties, and that makes it okay. Uh, but she wears it every single day, and um, and so I knew that she was going to need something that was going to be a little bit lighter. I knew that she was going to need something that was going to be a little bit lighter, um, and so this will be great for fall and spring, um, even for today, because we're, even though it's the day before Christmas, it's not very cold today. Um, it's going to be in the high 50s, so this would be perfect for wearing today. I do have to weave in all the ends, but um, I'm going to do that, and then she can wear it as her Christmas sweater. So that is done, which means that I can get back to my own sweaters. I have two <laughs> that are on the needles that need to be worked on. Um, I did not make any progress on them from the last time I podcast, so I've left them over there. Um, but, uh, but now that this is done, I can, I, I can get onto that. Okay. So that is all of my FOs. Um, I have two whips. Um, well, I mean, I have more obviously, cause I just mentioned the sweaters that I didn't work on, but, uh, I'm not going to even talk about those. We're going to pretend those aren't whips. We're going to only talk about the two that I have been working on. Um, one is I'm crocheting y'all. Well, I should say I have crocheted y'all because I haven't worked on this in weeks and weeks either. Um, I had to put it aside so that I could knit stupid Christmas things. Um, but I did get some progress done. I can't remember. I don't think I was working on this when I podcast last. I think I just showed you the yarn because I had picked it up in a Black Friday sale. Um, so this is what I've done. Uh, this is the Hibernate, yes, the Hibernate Blanket, um, which is a free pattern by Yarnspirations Design Studio, I believe. And it's a super, super simple um, pattern. It's one of the patterns that kind of comes I love none on any of these, but it kind of comes with these, um, you know, there's a free pattern on the back of the ball band is that kind of pattern. Uh, so it's super simple. As I said, I have never crocheted before. Really. Um, I did try it before I learned how to knit, but I, I failed at it. Um, so I, it's never been something that I've really been good at. Um, and, and not really even something that I've really wanted to pursue, except for these blankets. I just want to be able to make some of these blankets. I want to make one of these, um, and I want to make a crocheted uh, granny stripe blanket out of all of the sock minis that I have. Um, and so I kind of needed to learn at least the basics. This is just a single crochet and a chain. Single crochet, chain, single crochet, chain, which makes it easy, and that is good because I am, as you 
have just learned a very beginner when it comes to crochet. And I have managed to, I, well, if you don't remember from the last podcast, I got five of these massive uh, Bernat blanket skeins. They were on sale for five or six dollars at Joanne uh, for Black Friday, and I grabbed five of them. And I just decided I was going to do a color block. So this is the entirety of the first skein crocheted up. Um, and then you can see I started with the second skein, which is the orange, um, but I have not gotten very far on that. Uh, and uh, it goes, it's wide, it's a lap blanket, so it's that wide. Um, and I'm just, now that I've kind of gotten some, um, you know, knitting that I had to get done, um, I can now take some time to get back to crocheting. Um, I see errors. I'm sure that, yeah, right there. That's a big one right there. I think I totally goofed that up, right? Yeah, anybody else notice that big error right there? I don't even care. I'm not going to fix it. It'll still work. I'm <laughs> just doing my thing. I don't have to be perfect. It is literally just a blanket for me and probably Delaney to snuggle under while we're watching TV in the evening. I, there's nothing special about this. It's not going to anybody. It's not even going to be seen except for, you know, like on the podcast and maybe if somebody comes to my house. But people rarely come to my house, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> got that. Um, and I'm making my way through it. I was 20% of the way through because I had five colors and I'd finished one. Uh, however, when I was at um, Joanne just the other day buying some leftover Christmas things, I discovered that they still had the Burnett blanket on sale and they had these two colorways. So I now have seven, which is going to make the blanket bigger. And that's okay because, as I said, it was just going to be for me and now it's going to be for me and Delaney. She has informed me. I don't have a choice in this. Uh, so having seven colors will probably make a difference um, and make it more comfy. This, I don't even have... A basket or um, like a, a, a project bag in order to keep these big massive skeins in so I have them in this box so here is the two the four colors left from the original purchase and then these that is that is my blanket and I have no idea what color I'm going to use next although I probably no I don't know I'll figure it out when I finish with the orange so yeah, that is crocheting in progress. Um, and now that I have managed to do this without making too many <laughs> mistakes, I mean, besides that big ugly one, um, I am going to, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start my uh, sock blanket um, when this is done. I feel like I can, I can do that now. I know that it is not. Uh, single crochet. I think there's double crochet involved, but I feel like I can probably do it. I, I've noticed that as I'm going along, I'm seeing, I'm able to read the, the crochet a little bit better. That's one of the things I firmly believe that that is a, an integral part of becoming uh, a knitter with a capital K, um, is, is being able to read your knitting, um, seeing what you've done and what you need to do and where you need to do it by just looking at it instead of looking at the pattern all the time. Um, and I feel like, well, again, this is very, very, very simple. Um, I feel like I was, am getting to the point where I can read that and and see where where it is that I need to put my hook and do the if I've done the the single crochet or if I've done need to do the um, the, you know, the chain or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I feel like it's coming along and yeah. So I, I, I mean, I don't want to make absolute statements, but I don't feel like, uh, crochet will become a thing that I, uh, I don't think I'll become a crocheter with a capital C, or big C crochet all the time like I am a knitter 
I, you know, I knit every single day, and days do not go by where I do not knit. Um, however, I don't think that'll happen with crocheting, um, but it will be nice to be able to have at least a, a, a rudimentary understanding of that craft and be able to, you know, use it every once in a while. And my last uh, whip is a pair of Christmas socks. Uh, not the pair of Christmas socks that you guys saw in my last podcast. Those have just been sitting over there untouched for weeks and weeks um, because I've had to knit other things. Um, and I normally don't start a new pair of Christmas socks until the original pair is done. But on like December 8th, I discovered that this pair that I had ordered from Mustache Yarn, uh, which is a... A very Hobbit Christmas is an advent calendar colorway. Um, so there's 24 stripes. And I'm like, how am I not taking advantage of this? So on December 8th, I cast on these socks and rushed to catch up. I am knitting them uh, not two at a time on the same needle, but consecutively, I guess. Um, so I knit one stripe on the one sock, pick up the other needle, knit the stripe on that sock. Uh, and I've passed the heel. I think I am behind. Um, let me see. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I am behind um, because today is the 24th and I'm only on the 21st um, stripe. But I don't feel like I will have a hard time catching up. And t Christmas is tomorrow. So there we go. Uh, so like I said, I'm knitting them consecutively. So here's the second one. Um, and I just absolutely love these. Um, they're not traditional Christmas colors, but it is a Hobbit Christmas, which is not traditional either. So that's okay. Um, I got the extra mini for um, coordinating heels and toes. This is in Figgy Pudding, which is a gorgeous colorway. And um, I'm not counting this red stripe. I had thought that this was going to be a full stripe, but as you can see, it's like a half a stripe. So that doesn't count as one of my stripes um, in the 24 um, or the 21 that I have knit so far. But uh, but yeah, you can see I've, I've turned the heel. Um, I'm knitting these toe up, Turkish toe cast on, fish lips kiss heel, and I will just continue up until I decide that they are long enough. Um, I have plenty of yarn, probably, gosh, maybe even three, two and a half, at least two and a half of the way through the the stripe pattern sequence. And uh, yeah, these are super fun. So I've just kind of kept them beside my um, spot on the couch. When we watch TV, I throw in a stripe. It does not take long because the stripes are like five rows. Um, so it does not take long to get through a stripe. Each day, it's been kind of fun to try to keep up. Obviously, I have not done that perfectly, but it was fun. Um, and I didn't have to feel sad when I was watching vlogmases of people who had um, gotten the, uh, the Cozy Knitters advent. I'd forgotten that she did that. Um, was Saw it on Vlogmas last year and I was like, oh, next year I'm definitely going to get that. And I totally forgot about it again. Um, and this one from Mustache, I hadn't even made the connection. I mean, literally, I, I bought it. I think I had to pre-order it in, in October or... Yeah, maybe maybe early November and then it came and I was like, oh, I'll just add this to my Christmas um, uh, sock stash so that I could make it as part of my 31 pairs of Christmas socks. Um, and I'll just knit it up eventually and it just happened to be sitting over there and I was getting ready to put it away and I was like, huh, Advent. Advent, okay. So yeah, December 8th is when I woke up <laughs> to that very obvious fact oh I wanted to say going back to this real quick um, I I'm, I'm this is what I have left of the um, variegated color I have a little bit left over of each of the colors uh, this is this is the most 
And I'm holding on to this because this is, it, it fits Delaney exactly right now, um, but it, she's grown, she had like had a two inch growth spurt in the past like three months. I took her for her physical in September, I believe, and she, we just measured her yesterday and she has grown a full two inches since then. So, um, I'm thinking that there might be some more growing going on. And while this will fit her everywhere, um, for a long time, if she, if her torso gets any longer, it's going to get a little bit short. So I'm holding on to this because I feel like, um, I may end up needing to add an inch or two to the bottom and I want to be able to do that. So I just wanted to kind of say that. <clears throat> okay. So that is all of the whips and all of the FOs. And now let's just talk a little bit about, uh, new stash. Um, as you know, uh, I did my advent swap on, uh, my pretty much defunct Ravelry group on Ravelry. Uh, and, uh, while it was a small turnout for people who wanted to be involved in it, um, I think it, it was fabulous. Um, I was able to match my match people up and then I got matched with, um, I did just kind of a random number generator. So, um, I opted to go with two because we had an uneven number, which <laughs> worked out perfectly for me because I have plenty of sock leftovers and, um, and I love advents. So I was able to open two and give two without any fuss. Um, and I've had a grand time today is the 24th, as I've said like 18 times already. Uh, so they've all been opened. I got just some gorgeous colors from uh, Shady Sue, uh, who was one of my partners, and a beautiful uh, bag and needle minder, uh, not a needle minder, a, a needle case. Um, and uh, yeah, just really loved. She said that she dyes yarn as well, so some of these... I'm trying to make sure I get them all. Yeah, these are all from her. And she says she dyes as well. So some of these are her own hand dyed. And I just absolutely loved all of them. They're beautiful. And then I also was paired with uh, Michelle, who is Apley Juice. And she is the one that does the cranking services that I purchase all the time. Um, so uh, we had a grand time, uh, swapping with her. I got just as many, well, exactly as many pretties from her, um, that I absolutely love. Plus some extra stuff. She made me this, uh, ornament on her sock machine. I love it to death. And then, uh, let's see. Um, we swapped some extra goodies too. So, um, she got me some crafters palm balm. Oh, sorry, sorry, pain balm, which is um, kind of like a lotion bar, and you're supposed to put it on when you have like arthritis pain and whatnot. It's got uh, shade butter, uh, arnica, Montana oil, olive wax, candelilla wax, organic essential oils of clove, peppermint, and French lavender. It smells wonderful, um, and she gave it to me because I was saying how my hands hurt knitting on that um, bulky weight sweater, super bulky weight sweater, and then this massive uh, blanket. And so um, she sent this to me to put on my hands. And I honestly, it's it's helping. I, I think I'm developing um, some arthritis in this joint on this thumb because uh, I've noticed that it it hurts like that. And, uh, yeah. So, um, putting a little bit on this joint has, does seem to help a little bit. Yeah. So that's nice. Plus she got me this in case my family irritates me. This is a llama. It's a llama shooter. <laughs> so yeah, I can shoot it at my kids or across the room. And, um, yeah, absolutely love it. Came with like six balls. It's adorable. Um, and then I have 
we're also swapping. Oh, gosh, no, I forgot the best thing. In today's package, there was a cranked pair of shorty socks. Oh my gosh, I love them. So she, you know, cranks socks on her machine um, and she's phenomenal at it. And uh, she cranked me a pair of shorty socks with the rolled cuff like I love. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love these. They fit perfectly. Uh, it was such a neat surprise. I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, so yeah, such a fun, fun surprise. Thank you so much, Michelle, for these. I love them to death. And um, I'm going to wear them now. Uh, well, not now because I've already got socks on, but tomorrow probably they'll be my Christmas socks. Um, and then we also both, uh, Sue and Michelle and I decided to swap a full skein. So tomorrow I'll get to open up these. This is from Sue and this is from Michelle. Um, I had asked, uh, she, she, Michelle had asked me if I wanted it, my full skein to be wanted my full skein to be cranked and I said yes so there is a sock tube in here and a skein of sock yarn which um very exciting um and can't wait for tomorrow morning that's what I'm gonna do before I do anything else I'm gonna get up and open those which will be great um and then I did buy myself a couple of things oh I got my second to last um color of the month club skein from Nidalee Things. Uh, this is Stormy Seas. I think it's supposed to be blue-green because I've gotten two blues. I got a teal one and I got a blue one. So I guess maybe blue-green. Maybe she ran out of colors. It's pretty. I mean, for whatever reason she picked a bl another blue again, it's very pretty. Um, and I have one more coming, which will come probably uh, in a week or two, um, and then that'll be done. And then, um, it'll be kind of sad. It's always sad when you do a year thing and then it's over. But, um, but yeah. That's the way it goes, I guess. Um, and then I picked up two skeins of Phenolgarn Rama. Um, and, uh, let's see. This is 4287, and this one is 442. And I got them because I want to knit, I wanted to do the um, mystery knit along for Skein Deer's uh, Christmas mitts this year, but um, I just didn't have time to, to knit along with the mystery. So I, I know kind of like up to about here what the gloves look like, but um, or the mittens look like, and I don't know any further than that. And I want to knit them, I think I'm gonna give them to my mom. Um, these are colors exactly for her. This is like a nice, pretty royal purple and then gray. Um, and hopefully I can start those in January. I also took the opportunity to get the um, color cards for uh, Rama, Rama because um, uh, I want I want to be able to do more color work. And I never know what colors, you know, because you can look at it on on a, a screen and it can look completely different on two different monitors or the photos just look different because they were taken with different cameras. And uh, so this way I know exactly what the colors look like. So this is the PT2. Um, yeah, formerly Phenol Garn, now it's Phenol PT2. And uh, these are the color cards for them. So now when I want to plan out a color work pattern uh, project, I can look at these and decide which colors I really want. And then every year, the partner in charge at my firm goes around and personally thanks us all for a year's work of years worth of hard work and hands us a um, Christmas card with a little gift card in it. And uh, last year it was a, n a wonderful surprise. This year I was just as exci excited about it, although it wasn't as, as surprising because I kind of knew it was coming. Um, but I decided to do exactly what I did with it last year and that was buy some yarn um, guilt-free. I still buy yarn, 
uh, throughout the year, but it's not guilt free because it's, you know, money that I've taken from um, my own personal bank account. This was free money, free money. Uh, not really because I'm still, you know, it still gets points put on my W-2, but you know, that's beside, neither here nor there. Anyway, my yarn shop had um, a sale um, because they were celebrating their Christmas stuff, and so I got a single skein of Tosh DK by Madeline Tosh in uh, the, the Tarte colorway, I believe. Yes, Tarte. And I got this to go with the seven skeins. Seven! I got of this. This is also Tosh DK in the Havana colorway. It is a beautiful, like, robin's egg blue. I love robin's egg blue. Um, so I am going to pair this with this to do a colorwork yoked sweater. Um, I'm not entirely sure which pattern I'm going to go with, but I'm excited about it. And I was able to buy all of this with my gift card, which was wonderful. And it was especially wonderful because I was able to also buy this advent calendar without feeling too badly, uh, even though I was using my own money. Um, so this is the Forbidden Fibers um, Christmas Movie Edition advent calendar for 2019. Um, and you might notice, let's see if I can do this without everything falling out. It's Christmas Eve and I haven't opened it. I haven't on purpose because I got into the first one. It, it, there's, um, it's, it's Christmas movies, right? So it's, it, um, tells you kind of about the Christmas movies that it picked and, you know, the, the, like the impetus behind, behind, um, that idea. But it also says that there's a mystery knit along. And I thought, well, okay, it's our mystery pattern. I thought, okay, well, it's just something that you go down and download the pattern on certain days or whatever. no. I opened up the first box and there is a little, in fact, I can show you because I've already opened the first box. There's this little piece of paper in here and it has the pattern amount that you need to do for the mini that came in this box. So each day you get a new little bit of the pattern and I was like, that's so much fun. I love those kinds of things. So um, I decided that I couldn't, I mean, I didn't, I bought this like on the 15th or something like that of, of December. I didn't have enough time to catch up. I'm behind on everything else. So why would I start a new project? Um, but January, which is when kind of things get kind of blah, because, you know, nobody's got Christmas decorations up and Nobody's in looking forward to any holiday at the end of the month. And, you know, it's just, it's kind of, uh, I thought this will be perfect. I will do this in January. So starting New Year's Day, I will officially open this box. This is the unofficial opening. And I will cast on for this mystery cowl. I have no idea what it is. I don't know if it's a shawl or a cowl or a blanket. I don't know. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah. So that will be from January 1 to January 24. I will um, I will knit uh, this pattern. Yeah. And I have to admit that it has been hard for the past 10 days looking at this beautiful box with all of these little boxes in there knowing that there's things in there that I could be playing with. But I've just told myself to remember how much I will enjoy it in January when I get to do this. So yeah, that will be my, my January advent, my countdown to the 25th. And I'm looking forward to that. And that is it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it here. I normally talk about like some life things or some books, but um, I'm not gonna do that because uh, this is almost an hour already. I will be able to edit some of it out like all of the times that I yelled at my children for being too loud. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and call it now. I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas. Um, spend time with people that you love 
and uh, and yeah, just enjoy it. And uh, I won't see you before the new year, so have a happy new year as well. All right, guys. Merry Christmas. Happy knitting.